Hey everyone, today's Real Vision Daily Briefing is sponsored by Crane Shares. Learn about their KRBN ETF at craneshares.com forward slash KRBN forward slash Real Vision. Now to the top analysis of today's markets. Our stocks poised for a bull run. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Real Vision Daily Briefing. With me today is Mark Ritchie, the second manager of RTM3. Hi, Mark. How are you? Great, Maggie. Lots to talk about. Thanks for having me back. Oh, my gosh. There is a lot to talk about. We had a bunch of headline, a bunch of news for investors to come through today. Uh, one of the bigger ones being right out of the gate, another tame inflation reading, a lower than expected PPI, really confirming that CPI release that got things going yesterday. And we had all we have all the U.S. Uh, major U.S. stock markets, uh, Treasury yields uh, continuing to back up, and the dollar, the U.S. dollar moving lower. So, you know, when you look across the landscape, Mark, what's really top of mind for you right now? Well, uh, for starters, you know, I, I, if I was to put a headline on this, I would say, you know, bullish confirmations across the board in terms of really for our work at Minervini Private Access, uh, and which is what you, we use at RTM confirms everything that we kind of thought in terms of a major market bottom potentially in January. And if you remember, you and I talked about that back then. And really, over the last four or five months, it's been, I would say, a matter of question whether or not this is just a cyclical rally versus the start of a new bull market. And of course, the reality is nobody, you know, I don't have a crystal ball here. Uh, I never have. Mm -hmm. uh, when I make these calls, I'm, I'm using them on, you know, a variety of different indicators. And then watching how things play out. So sort of changing my view one card at a time as it comes out of the deck. And I'm saying what we've seen over the past four, five, six weeks uh, has all been confirmations in my view that we're in a new bull market for potential risk assets. Now, why do I say that? What am I looking at? And which one of those do you want me to get into in what order? You know, dealer's choice. Uh, and <laughs> We'll see what, how much how much time we have um, yeah. and sort of go from there. So let's start with, and it's interesting that you say risk assets. Um, I think that's going to be really important because we've got questions kind of across the asset classes today. And we're going to get to all of them. So risk on. Let's talk about stocks first because, you know, it's been interesting. I mean, we do, you know, we're talking about um, a bull run and we said it that way because, I mean, you know, we've seen stocks that up four days, but if you look at the NASDAQ year to date, I mean, Everybody's been watching this kind of thinking, you know, are we going to pull back? Is there going to be a pullback? When is the pullback? Is that my opportunity to get in? It doesn't look like it's happening at that at this stage. So how are you feeling about stocks and why do you feel so bullish? Yeah, I'm quite bullish. I'm as long as I've been in quite some time, certainly over 12 months. And look, I, I'll look to get even longer from here should things continue to improve. And look, the short answer is improving breadth. So, and we talked we mm. talked about this all the time. And uh, here's the funny thing, right? Uh, and I was talking to Brian offline about this beforehand. And he, and he was saying, hey, great call you made in January. And I said, listen, the reality is though, the market was quite narrow. For a short period of time, we had a, what looked like a broad-based advance, which triggered you know, that sort of, I talked about this in January, that, you know, momentum breath thrust off the lows, which usually signals a major bottom. But then, especially after we had the Russell rollover really hard with the regional banking crisis, and it looked like, you know, the, the rally at least was, you know, maybe DOA or in severe timeout. But the reality is we didn't roll over. And now over the last five weeks, breath has really improved. And the first thing I would use to highlight that is, the Russell's gotten back in gear. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you look at on the NYSE, and I think I sent you guys uh, a chart of this. I think but we have it. Yeah, we'll try to new, pull it up if we new do. Highs, new highs relative to new lows is, is finally breaking into sort of new high ground for the first time over the last, really since the beginning of the bear market, which means we are seeing, you know, a massive improvement under the surface. The percentage of stocks in the NYSE above their 50-day moving average is currently at 80%. That's quite bullish, where a few weeks ago it was much, much lower. Um, could we still see room for improvement? Yes. But even over the past couple of weeks, you, for the, you mentioned the NASDAQ, which is a really good point. Clearly, that's your leader. But leadership within the NASDAQ has been very narrow. Yeah. Everyone has talked about this. You know, the market's that's, And that's the thing everyone's been so skeptical and hating, right? Is right. that it's been like three stocks. Well, or, right, right. Yeah, the Nasdaq's being held up by six stocks, and the entire S and P is only being held up by you know. Okay, th that became old news, and and the, the reality is that's true. But in a market that's bottoming, 
And Raul made this point actually this week, even relative to crypto. Where, do, where are asset managers going to go first? The place where they're most comfortable. You want to see that broaden out. And over the last couple of weeks, the mega caps took a rest and the rest of the NASDAQ started to play catch up. So the herd started to expand. Uh, we saw semis break out and hold those breakouts. And I think the biggest thing for me is I look at lots of different groups and how are names that are trading sort of near their 52 week highs acting. This entire bear market, even a stock that stocks or groups that were holding up well, they would break out and then the money would rotate. Institutions would sell into those names and buy names coming off the lows. And you'd have this sort of like wash and rinse cycle where you just couldn't grab a hold of any trend. That dynamic has really changed over the last four or five weeks. And anyone who trades directionally, if you've been you know, playing in the market at all, can tell you. Off the lows, it was easier to make money in the index itself, unless you just went overweight NVIDIA uh, mm. or a few of the key leaders, which is very difficult to do, myself included. And I was bullish NVIDIA. Uh, <laughs> so I didn't have a big enough position uh, because there wasn't enough overall participation. And mm. I'm saying that has dramatically changed over the last couple of weeks, which is why all of a sudden I find myself longer and getting a little bit longer. And we're starting to see, again, managers go out the risk curve the more they get comfortable. Uh, mm -hmm. The reasons why, for me, aren't even as important. We can get into potentially yeah. why it is, of course. But I think even the action you mentioned, you know, off the top, the last couple of days is very telling in my view. Last mm -hmm. week we had what looked like a scary ADP. Uh, yeah, oh, yes. Let's employment not forget employment that. numbers a and, number. right. and all of the all of the macro bears went short stock, short bonds. You know, we're getting ready to put in a short term top in the equities and depending on, on how you look at rates, you know, make new highs in uh, rates, lows in price. And then what did we have yesterday? We had a complete reversal of that dynamic. But what was interesting and what you saw through really nine to 12 months of the bear market was any time equity prices kind of made these knee jerk reaction new highs, they would shake out the highs and then go sideways and go lower. Well, we've seen the complete opposite of that. And I think this market just steamrolled everybody who, who basically said, well, let's get short and use last week's highs as a stop. And we're continuing to follow through. We closed, you know, I didn't check the last five minutes, but pretty close to near new fresh highs, you know, say in the S&P and the NASDAQ. And rates look like, you know, that may have been a bear trap, bull trap, depending again, you know, bullish on, on rates, you know, bearish on price. So, and I think if rates are even going to stay in this range, that's certainly potentially good for risk assets. And if we're near, of course, you know, near the end of the tightening cycle, like a lot of people potentially think, uh, again, I think that's bullish for risk assets and stocks, growth, momentum, crypto. All right. We're going to go through all of those. Yeah. We're going to sure. go through all those. Um, S&P 500 and NASDAQ close at their highest level in 2023. Uh, is the headline crossing S and P up uh, 0.85%? 4,510 is the level there, and uh, Nasdaq up 1.58%. Uh, 14,138 for those of you who are really watching those levels. So Michael asking, it's summer. Oh, well, he's commenting, it's summer. Traders went to the Hamptons. Well, not if they were on the wrong side of that trade, Michael. But Michael earlier said no one talks about earnings, just as I was thinking about earnings. So we we are. We are uh, sharing the same thought bubble today, Michael. But so we're we're about to get into earnings. We're going to get a, a, a you know the first ones trickling out. Mark, do you think this presents an opportunity, or is there headline risk involved there, or you don't care? <laughs> well, I certainly care. I, you know, or you of, don't watch that well, <laughs> because you're, you're watching the technical. Well, uh, listen. The reality is we're already, I think Yahoo Finance put out a, an article today saying that we're already in a technical earnings recession based on, you know, two contracting quarters of, of earnings. And, and this particular quarter is forecast to be worse than the prior two. And I think, uh, according to their work, I haven't double checked this myself, but it is something like the worst, you know, earnings contraction in terms of stock earnings since uh, 20, 2020, I want to say either, you know, the the, the major decline we had, uh, either it was a Q2 or a Q3 of 2020. Um, okay, what happened to the stock market <laughs> during that period of time? We went higher. We didn't go lower uh, because it was already priced in. So should, should even earnings come in better than the potential expectations, 
uh, and you and Maggie, I think you and I talked about this. I think I talked about this with Asha last time. I mean, this is the most potential telegraph recession we've ever seen. Do you think that CEOs and heads of corporate companies aren't aware of, of this potential risk? You know, all discussions of a potential soft or hard landing aside is what I'm saying. The market is sending you a powerful signal. You can choose to ignore that all you want. I'm saying that's not my process where, I, look, I love to have, you know, armchair macro views, but I lose them quickly when I'm losing money. Uh, and, and my goal is, listen, I'll be the first one to say, could I be dead wrong about uh, risk assets going higher? Sure. Uh, that's what risk management's for. But right now, everything I'm seeing uh, is telling me higher. Uh, and now I can look for some other, con uh, what I'd rather share, what are some confirming things you want to watch for? to tell you that at least my thesis is continuing to play out because it doesn't really matter what anyone thinks if they don't give you at least some form of a script or a playbook that has any predictive power or value. And I'm saying yeah. this is how I've done it really in every cycle. And I've been waiting for an opportunity like this to get long and then look to get even longer. Uh, we'll see, you know, how we shake out from here, but yeah, I'd rather, I, I, you know, I can give one or two scenarios though, too. If you look at the 2015, 2016 equity bear market we had, this was the exact same argument I made then. Uh, and it reminds me a little bit, we had an earnings recession in stocks and all of your macro economist guys were saying, economy's going into recession, we're gonna have a recession. Never showed up. Then the market started moving higher in mid 16 and everybody doubted it. Then we broke out you know, post Brexit and everybody doubted it. Then we ripped higher after Trump and everybody said it's a Trump bump and it's a Trump short squeeze. And that rally went on for another 12 to 18 months. It was a full-on new bull market uh, because the earnings recession never led to an e a full-on economic recession. Well, you need to hold that at least as a possibility. And you and I had talked offline yeah. too. There, there's other possibilities as well, uh, which I think we can get into. But we, that's so one we that's try, we, As Mark alluded to, we try not to have the show before the show, but we're all so darn excited about all this stuff that we start chatting and then we lose ourselves and then we have to... So, But you don't miss anything. We, we do it all in front of the camera too. So... Very interesting. Colin, I laughed out loud when I saw this. Um, you somehow always ha make me laugh at this, but Colin uh, made the comment, um, this is getting ridiculous. Uh, what's going on? Asking for a friend. And and it, it very funny, but I think it's true for some people because it's been confusing. So in addition to that headline we mentioned uh, you know, earlier, just about the movement in stock and the economic data, um, we also had the actors union voting to go on strike, shutting down production across Hollywood. We've been having a lot of conversation about wages when we see these kinds of collective bargaining moves. Um, St. Louis Fed President James Bullard, for those of you who didn't catch it, one of the more outspoken regional Fed governors and someone who's been hawkish as of late, not always, because he's been there for 15 years. He used to be really, really uh, dovish, actually. But he's stepping down mid-August, so there's going to be a, a change at the Fed. Raul and Julian Brigden of MI2 Advisors talked about the Fed, financial conditions, and the sort of confusion that a lot of people like you feel, Colin, uh, on their show, on their monthly show today, Macro Insiders. I want to just play a little clip from that, and then we'll talk on the other side, Mark. Normally, markets bottom after the Fed starts cutting rates. Why is it different this time around? Cash. It's just, I mean, by markets, I think you mean liquidity. And, you know, it's our view and it's been our view and it's Raoul's view, right? It's all our view that the only thing that determines asset prices is liquidity. We've actually seen a emergence of an amazing event where you have a negative correlation between bond yields and rates, essentially, and equity prices. Right? This never, ever, ever, ever used to be the case uh, prior to QE that uh, bond, the equity would rally as bond yields rallied. But now equities rally because they're driven by liquidity, okay? And bonds generally sell off when liquidity is rising because it's reflationary. So you have this bizarro relationship. So we have now truly fucked up the macro feedback loop whereby central banks think they control it. And so the only way for them to address it is drain liquidity out of the system. And as we've seen, the Fed has struggled to do that because of what Treasury's done with the TGA, because what they had to do with the banking program, right? So to my mind, it's that simple. This is not a normal functioning 
environment. So that is one point they agree on. But for those of you who watch, there's a lot of other areas where they differ, um, although they are both also uh, mirroring what you're saying, Mark, about risk assets maybe looking at different reasons and really plugging into their macro thinking. Um, but we had, they had a robust discussion about the labor market, inflation, and the best place to put your money right now. Fantastic stuff. If you are not a member or if you are not a pro member, which is the tier that show airs on, and you want to check it out, scan the QR code and find out how you can do that and how you can join and or upgrade. So Mark, um, super interesting as, um, as we're talking, and this happens a, a lot when, when I'm doing a, uh, anything with Raul, when he starts talking about being positive risk assets, I think it was JG 1982 said everything except the market is doing bad financial disaster. People hate or are so skeptical of this market because it feels like things aren't good in pockets. They're just, it just seems to be hard to believe the entire way up that the NASDAQ has done this. It seems like a market everyone hates. Yeah, and I would, I would start by saying I love that. You know, uh, markets need a wall of worry to climb. Uh, you know, I, I made this point in summer of 2020 with Ed Harrison all those years ago, and I was very bullish, and there were some extremely negative, pessimistic uh, comments. And I, I was just saying, look, I'm following the tea leaves of my process, but the reality is then by the time... COVID was over and everybody wanted to buy stocks in late 21. It was over. The market is a, is a discounting forward-looking mechanism. It's looking out six to nine months, painting a different picture. Now, specifically to the issue of, you know, well, the Fed hasn't started cutting yet. How could risk assets have already bottomed? It's like, listen, first of all, always be uh, skeptical of very small sample sizes whenever you're making these, you know, must you know, this happened, therefore it has to happen again. But there are scenarios where that, that hasn't been the case. And 94, 95 would be one of them, which I think would, again, I'm, I'm not going to get married to any one of these, but like the market ripped to new highs and the, uh, in, in early 95. And then the Fed started cutting in the middle of that year. Uh, there was also this very interesting phenomenon that happened called the, the build out of the internet really started getting going, which, mm -hmm. you know, Say whatever you want. Is the market looking forward to seeing a productivity boom and future, you know, uh, you know, earnings and that type of thing? Potentially. Well, what do we have right now with AI? Uh, could we be rhyming with a cycle like that? I don't see why not. Again, though, I'm going to use risk management uh, in case I'm dead wrong uh, to pivot the other way. I, you don't have to dig in with your heels either way. And when someone says like, you know, this is making no sense, that's what should get you to sit up in your chair. Uh, and reevaluate your potential process and your market worldview, if you will. Uh, again, as I said, as I like to say a lot, it's like, you know, I'm wrong all the time. I just want to be wrong small and right big. And right now, I, I'm saying the pain trade is potentially higher. Last point I would make that I saw interesting today, I think it was Jason Shapiro. He's been on Real Vision before. Yeah. Uh, uh, somebody I, I don't know personally, but I respect him as a contrarian. And he tweeted, Second half projections for equity performance are the worst in 30 years, meaning whatever the street is saying, and the street's always wrong, um, in my view, they are predicting flat to lower. I mean, that is a, that is a perfectly mixed cocktail for higher prices. So uh, some great, great questions coming in. So let's go, let's go through some of them. And Peter just dropped one that I think um, uh, is sort of and a few others along this line. And I think it's really important. So what are the things we have to look at to confirm your thesis, Mark, that we are in a bull market? Great question. That's a way to lead the witness because that's where I really want to go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, what I'm looking for, uh, and I talked about this in January, where I said we had sort of that zwag um, 10 day average to uh, advanced decline breath thrust. And we never got the other breath thrust that I, I tend to like, which has a his good historical track record. And that is the percentage of stocks um, in the NYSE above their 50 day. That's at 80%. If that pushes to 90%, that has a phenomenal track record. Um, now, everyone doubted the call in January. And I'm saying, if this happens even like, you know, as far as we are off the lows, that would just tell me the market is accelerating. You know, the RPMs are revving back up. Now, I, I want to caveat this by, by saying a couple of things. One, we're short-term extended. So I, I wouldn't just run out and chase uh, a bunch of you know, stocks uh, or things you know, that, are, that have already ripped higher. Uh, I would wait for potential consolidations or pullbacks. Um, but a couple other things to really watch for. Look at the construction in the Dow. 
uh, and I sent you guys that, that weekly chart. That, you know, I don't care what your technical uh, school is. That is a bullish construction if we break out of that. You know, where you come lower, it, now you're tightening up on the right-hand side. Uh, you know, I would call it a volatility contraction pattern. Some people would call it a rising wedge. However you want to look at it. Now, the Dow was only 30 stocks, but it's a good gauge, certainly for the economy. And then if you, I'm not, I'm not a Dow theorist guy either, but the Dow transports, which I think I also sent a, a chart, are potentially confirming a potential breakout. That, that looks good economically and for the overall health of the general market. Uh, I think you want to continue to see the mega caps uh, not necessarily just steamroll everybody higher. I think that they should, some of them should continue to lead, but as they rest, you'll see the market continue. It's sort of, it's the rising tide lifts all boats where the last year it was the opposite. It was sort of this one poked its head up and then rolled over and poked its and, and then we went the opposite way. So, uh, you know, and then the other thing I would look for is the NYSC advanced decline line. It looks like it's going to break potentially into new highs if, it, if we take out the highs uh, back in February. If that confirms, that confirms that the, the parts under the surface of the hood are acting well, meaning all the parts of the engine are firing. So your engine's in good health or, you know, that again, use that herd analogy that the herd is healthy and it's not just being led uh, by a few stocks. Uh, the other thing I would say is look for the leaders to continue to act well. Mm -hmm. um, and the biggest mistake people often make when they're underinvested is they either buy something that's super extended. Uh, and what I often you know, tell our, our clients at Minervini Private Access is I don't want normal price action to knock me out of a position. Well, if something's extended, the pullbacks are normal and then they get knocked out because they, they buy it up a bunch and then it pulls back. Coinbase would be a great example of a stock you shouldn't buy right now. We can get into that when we talk about crypto, which I definitely want to talk about. Yeah, um, we're going to do that the, next. The other mistake, though, they make is they buy laggards thinking, oh, this stock's gone nowhere. It's going to play catch up. Uh, that, <laughs> that's a good way to underperform. Uh, so I think yeah, you want to- Yeah, just like because they think it's cheap. But, it's, you know, exactly, that's not right. Yeah, and what's cheap stays cheap and what's expensive stays expensive. Uh, again, though, you know, as I've talked about before and, you know, people that, you know, haven't watched uh, my, the long form interview I did with Jamie McDonald uh, on Real Vision to get a little more sense for sort of my style and how I do risk management is, listen, you, you have to use some form of risk mitigation protection. But yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up, Mark, because as you were saying it, I made a note to circle back to this because that is as important as everything that you're saying, and which, of course, is not investment advice. No one can know your risk profile but you. I always say that um, this is just Mark's view on what he's thinking about. But that risk management part is as important as everything else he's saying. And I think for people on different parts of their journey, that's the part that maybe they leave out or they, they're not, um, are you doing that through options? Is that what you guys were talking about in that segment? Uh, well, I was just talking about specifically just using some form of stops. Uh, okay. I mean, you, you can use options, of course. Right. Uh, I use those occasionally, but generally, you know, positioning myself in such a way where I know if things are acting the way they should be, uh, where am I wrong? Right. So just like, you know, just discipline. The, the, well, the, the gentleman just asked, what should we be looking for, you know, moving mm -hmm. forward? Well, if breath doesn't continue uh, to work in our favor, you're probably going to see names, individual names in your portfolio come under more pressure than you'd like. So the first thing is the general averages should not pull back more than mid single digits, most likely. And pullbacks should be on at least lighter volume on average. The other thing, like I was saying, the leading group. So take any of that AI related type area. Now, NVIDIA is wildly extended. Um, I would not be chasing that here, but if it pulls back orderly, you can look to get involved. A name like AMD, the pullback it has had, these lows should potentially hold. That's another one you can look at. There are other names, you know, in, in those types. What about the QQQ? Types. Kevin was asking about QQQ. Would you get long here if you weren't already in the trade? Uh, no, I would not buy the Q Qs are extended. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had a feeling that was in the group. The, that time, the time to buy the Qs was two weeks ago when we were pulling in and sort of forming this little consolidation or looking at individual stocks within the Qs that are then subsequently breaking out of longer consolidations. And that's really what we've seen, uh, where stocks are breaking out and they're not just, you know, institutions are buying equities. That And this is, you know, Everyone likes to talk about flows and all that kind of stuff. Ultimately, that's what my work is looking at. So I don't care when the big boys are buying, uh, you know, that sends a loud, clear message. And I'm saying for the first time in 
really since late 21, mid 21, we're seeing institutions on average putting more work, money to work in stocks and buying dips, not selling new breakouts. Hmm. Um, and Michael, I think that answers your question about what indicators Mark would be looking at to tell him to cut his long exposure or at least become more cautious. I'm, I'm cognizant of time, and I promise Dominic that we talk about crypto because we've seen moves. That is, uh, you know, first of all, are are you thinking that still trades like a risk asset? I think the answer is yes. And then what do you, what are you looking for there? Because I know you're watching those charts and you you like what you see. I do. And, you know, it's funny. I, I was on the Twitter spaces, I think, on, on Monday when Raul was talking about this. And look, the reality is uh, this is today was a technical breakout, both in Ethereum and Bitcoin. Now, I, I want to see them follow through. And we actually pointed this out for our clients on the MPA platform in terms of Bitcoin in real time uh, in, in terms of related ETF. But the, the reality is this. Anytime you get a market doing what the, they've had a, a big rally uh, and then they, they've gone quiet and tight. This is where if you're a long-term bull or you're someone who's maybe bullish and wants to get on board, this is exactly how I would play it, mm. where you can buy through you know, these range breakouts and use some type of risk control as tight as today's low, last week's low, even last month's low, because look, technicals don't, they don't cause anything. They're the effect. So if these markets are truly under institutional accumulation, like people a lot smarter than me are potentially saying, then price levels are moving potentially higher. So here's exactly how, even if I had a, a core position, which I do in Ethereum, I'm topping it up on breakouts like today, where I can then add a trading scale, trade out of that and finance my core position for an even bigger hold. That is exactly how I do risk management. The, the point though I would make in terms of crypto is we've seen a definitely another character change. And yes, of course, it trades like a risk asset. But look at the chart of Coinbase. This is one of the best examples I can think of, of market telling a different story in terms of the news. The day the suit from the SEC came out, that stock made a massive low on big volume and has rallied over 100% on enormous volume ever since that day. There is no better example of all the bad news being priced into an asset than that. I do not own Coinbase. Uh, mm. I, want to, I want to say that. And I would not be buying it here. However, when something rallies that much on that big a volume, it has my attention. Uh, and now if it consolidates from here is where I'm saying the market will be telling you powerfully that this is an asset that's potentially going higher. I like crypto and ETH as a, a little bit better, or excuse me, Bitcoin and ETH. Mm. Um, and at one point, I totally agreed with, with Raul, which I sort of covered on in terms of the general stock market, but crypto is no different, I think, is the idea that the safest assets will lead in a new bull cycle. Mm. And then should we, see, should we see people go out the risk curve? So that's something I would look for there. Right now, even Bitcoin and Ethereum, I think they're running into potential overhead supply because they're still, you know, we're, we're in a decent sized bear market here. But if the bottom is really in, which you know I even talked about earlier, this is a great spot, uh, I think, to, to potentially add exposure if you don't have any or to top up in a long exposure that you already have. Uh, so for those who are interested in hearing more about this, we have a crypto gathering going on right now. Uh, there, there's been a ton of news. Uh, as someone commented, XRP is moving. Uh, there's there's a whole there's a whole host of news, um, and that includes one of the one of the panels. Uh, Ash is talking to a bunch of traders on uh, technical analysis, um, and it's Will Clemente, Rect Capital, Kyle Dupes, people who are really really deep in this. If you if this is something that you're not watching and you want to educate yourself a little bit more, there are also panels on that. We talk about every asset here, so even if you think you're not into crypto, you you, you know my my approach to this is I want to make sure I know about everything. So um, tons of tons of great content there. They're, they're killing it. So I encourage you to go. Brian's going to drop uh, some information about how you can see all of that. It's been great stuff. And it's so timely given what you just said, Mark. So we, we covered so much great stuff here. Uh, and it's so nice to be able to talk about you feeling really bullish. I mean, you, you, you know, you have been watching this and a lot of people have been anticipating this. There have been signs out there. You've talked about them, but you needed some confirmation and it sounds like it's coming through. So given all of this, 
um, you know, what are you feeling most optimistic about? And what is the thing that would sort of worry you? Somebody was asking, what about WTI and sending inflation back up? What, 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 you know, what, what is the thing that you feel sort of, you know, most confident about right now? Well, in terms of worries, I mean, listen, if, if for some reason the Fed aggressively starts tightening, tightening again, and obviously that would be inflation or the, or, you know, related, uh, you know, we're going to have a potential, uh, that's, that's going to put, uh, the competition for stocks in terms of rates right back in, you know, front and center stage. Yeah. Good point. Uh, so that, that would be really one of the big ones. But the funny thing is, you know, the equity market, I mean, if you had told me a year ago that we would have held up even this well in the face of this high of rates, uh, I, I would have been skeptical and I was mm. skeptical for a long period of time. Um, so I would say what has me most constructive is the, is the general signal the stock market is telling you. And the fact that most people are skeptical, skeptical, pessimistic, and scared, um, I, I think is valuable enough in and of itself. And the best way to change your mind is take a position, mm -hmm. uh, take, take a contrary <laughs> position and see how it works out. Um, test, test the thesis, uh, you know, so to, yeah. And sort of closing, I would say, look, if we start to see, uh, Rates making a new uh, aggressive highs again. I think that's going to correspond to probably distribution in the general stock market. And guess what that's going to do to my portfolio? I'm going to start feeling pressure right away. So the risk management protocols are going to start kicking in mm -hmm. uh, to say, you're wrong, you're wrong. You've got to get smaller. Um, this is how I do it uh, every single time. Right now, everything's saying the opposite. You're right, you're right. Get longer, right. get longer. That's why it's good to have a framework, and that and that is great uh, a great episode on risk management. You can find that on our website as well. Um, Mark, it's been fantastic to catch up. Can't wait to see what happens. We'll catch up with you again soon, so we can track it all. All right, Maggie. Uh, thanks for having it. me. Appreciate it. Appreciate it so much. And thanks to all of you. Remember, summer Friday tomorrow, so we'll be back here at our earlier time for the daily briefing. Can't wait for you all to join us for that. In the meantime, take care and good luck out there. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Today's Real Vision Daily Briefing is sponsored by Crane Shares. Learn about their KRBN ETF at craneshares.com forward slash KRBN forward slash Real Vision.